Hello, this is John Halibrand with GlideFast Consulting. Today I wanted to show you a little bit about variable attributes and how to use them within catalog items. As you can see over here, I've created a ServiceNow Access Request catalog item. And we go into it, you can see that I've created a couple of variable sets. And in, in the variable set we're going to be primarily playing with is the Access Request bar set. And in here you'll see a number of fields that you'd normally see in an Access Request, like Requested for, uh, Location, um, the requested for phone number, uh, add or remove access, is it production or non-production, and, and the group names. Um, as you can see, this is a list collector that allows for multiple groups to be added. I wanted to show you how to use these variable attributes to kind of change the behavior of some of the um, variables. So let's go over to the ServiceNow Access Request and try it. And I want to show you what it looks like on the native GUI or the native UI. So this is inside ServiceNow. So one thing you'll notice is that this list collector takes up quite a bit of real estate. The first thing you should try before doing anything else is just reformatting the page, uh, making it look a little bit nicer. But I want to just demonstrate how these var attributes can be used to make it look a little cleaner. You'll notice on the on the portal, it looks a lot more sleek. We use kind of a, a different formatting here, more like a, it's a glide list. Uh, you can add multiple uh, groups here in this field. It doesn't have that huge list collector. Uh, view that it does on the native GUI. So let's take a look at the item itself and we'll go into the, we'll drill down into the bar set and we'll look at the group name field. And you'll notice that there's a variable attributes tab on the default value tab of the list collector variable. And one of the options that you have here is to not show the filter. Now, if you recall, maybe I should back up here. Let's go back over here. And I want to show you this. So you see here, this list collector has this filter here. It, it, it allows the user to filter on the on the all the results returned. Now, if you if you want to kind of save on real estate and you have a good ref qual here that brings a good selection where they can just use the search functionality here, and you want to get rid of this filter, you have that option. So let's drill back into it again. And in this variable attributes field. We just type no underscore filter, and then we save it. And then let's click back into it. And what you'll notice here is the filter of, uh, functionality is gone. So the user can still use the search box to find what they're looking for, but that search functionality is gone and adds a little bit cleaner look. It's still kind of taking up a lot of real estate, but it's a little bit better. But we can improve this a little bit further as well. Go back into the group name list collector and we can type in glide list. Glide underscore list, in the variable attributes. And let's look back in the access request. And you'll notice that uh, it, it looks very similar. The glide list looks uh, format looks a lot similar to what you've seen, maybe notifications and things like that. So you can unlock and click the unlock button you can add, and you'll see this in workflow as well. Um, you can add the groups that you need here. And then you can click the lock button again, and it looks a lot cleaner. So you have a few different options with these list collectors as far as variable attributes are concerned. So we have this requester for a phone, and let's say you only want like 10 characters um, available in that field. Let's drill into the requested for phone max underscore length and then this is going to need a value so you put the equal sign and then let's just say 10 and update so what this is going to do is just going to limit the amount of characters that can be typed into that field so let's say we hold down three you can keep keep typing it over and over but it's only going to allow 10 characters in there so as long as you have a value of max length equals and then a, a number, uh, a numerical val value, you'll, you'll, you can allow that many characters. It doesn't, doesn't take into consideration any other formatting, just the number of characters in the field. And there's also a ServiceNow uh, page, a web page that uh, describes service catalog variable attributes in more detail. 
Uh, you, so we saw Glide List. Um, this is searchable choice is another one you can use. Max length I showed you, max unit. This will show in different units, whether it's minutes, seconds, hours, and days. You can set that to dis uh, the display on a, on a particular variable. No filter we showed you. Uh, these three are the most commonly used that I've, I've used. These are used on reference fields. Uh, so let me just show you this. There's a little bit of complexity as far as the autocompleter here, and I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, but let's go back into our configuration item. And let's use the requested for field. Okay, so if we look over here, uh, we see that the requested for field just shows basically the username and the email, okay? What you can do here is you can add variable attributes such as ref AC columns. So let's say the cl a client comes back and says, well, I wanna see the first name, last name, username, email, etc." So what you can do here, is you can, and I've got a little cheat sheet here with all of this already done. So let's add this here. So, so ref AC columns equals, we have name and each, each column or each variable is separated with a semicolon. Ref AC columns equals name, username, first name, last name, email. So let's take, let's save that. And then we can go back out here and let's refresh. And now you'll see that we have the name, username, first name, last name, and email, okay? Uh, there is one other thing you can do. There's several things you can do here, actually. There's, there's also a uh, order by. So let's say you've added a bunch of columns. You can actually select which column you wanna order by. So let's order by last name. You'll see kind of the change. So right now you see Able Tutor, Abraham Lincoln, Adele, Eileen, uh, and so on and so forth. You can change that. Let's say a client says, oh, we use last name first. We always search by last name. Uh, you can actually do this. And what you want to do here, when you separate different variable attributes, you want to use a comma. Uh, so it's kind of backwards. <laughs> it looks kind of backwards. You use, when, you use, when you add columns for the ref AC columns attribute, you separate them by a semicolon. And when you add additional variable attributes, you separate them by a comma. So let's use, let's add ref AC order by last name and hit save. So you'll see now that the last name is being ordered first. So you got Veronica Acorn, uh, John Adams, uh, and so on, so on and so forth. Okay, so you have the av availability to um, sort on whichever uh, column that you're displaying over here in ref AC columns. And these here, these auto completers have different behaviors. Now they, they say here that uh, this displays matching autocomplete choices as a drop-down choice list. This list only displays a display value column of the reference table. So if we were to do, and you want, let's say you want a little bit more control over what's displayed, you can add this ref autocompleter Ajax reference completer. And we look at the requested for. You're only going to see the name. You're going to see the full name of the user. Uh, and that's because we added this particular ref autocompleter. It says here, the list only displays the display value column of the reference table. If there is no other autocompletion class specified, reference fields automatically use this class. Now, I don't know if that's entirely true or if, uh, if they've changed that, um, because if I don't have a ref autocompleter, um, it actually seems to default to this. Um, so basically any, any value that I, or any variable that I add in the ref AC columns attribute, it takes advantage of this if I don't have it listed. Let's, let's take a look at that. So let's delete this all together with the ref auto completer, save it. So we're not calling out, we're not specifying anything there. And if we go back out here and we refresh, you notice that all the columns that I have displayed are still listed. So I don't know that it entirely is true that it uh, it, it uses this um, automatically. Um, it seems to default to this. So I guess my suggestion is play around with these to see if you're getting the desired behavior that you want. And there are other there are other variable attributes that you can use, but I wanted to kind of show you these uh, just just to kind of demonstrate how 
You can uh, change the behavior of how at, uh, variables are displayed, the columns that can be displayed, how you can sort by them with string fields, uh, how many characters are allowed in the field. With the list collectors, you can change the look and behavior by removing the filter or making it a glide list. So I hope this tips and tricks video of how to use variable attributes uh, helps you in the future with working with clients. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.